Hello and welcome to vlog number 6. This episode is dedicated entirely to my first all-new aircraft in well over a year, the 1-48 scale Martin Baker MB5. You will have seen in the last episode the 3D printed parts fresh from the printer. The technology is a real asset, but there is still a way to go before the MB5 will be in production. I picked up a cut on my left thumb removing support material from the wing. It looks far worse than it actually is. I have collected together all the information I have on this most charismatic of aircraft, ready to get stuck in and make a start on this project. A parts list helps me plan all the parts I have to sculpt, and in what material each master will be. This is essential for when I am planning the production moulds. Of course I have printed out a master set of plans in 1-48 scale to work from. I have made a good start on the 3D printed parts, despite the odd injury, cleaning them up, filling them with milliput, and filing them back into shape. Normally with milliput I would warm it in an oven to cure it for about half an hour. This allows me to rework it, add more, and quickly repeat the process, making sculpting more efficient. I can't take that risk with the 3D printed ABS. I could lose days of work if the part were distorted by the heat, so I have to let it cure naturally, which really slows things down. My priority is to get the undercarriage finished, so that I can send it off for bronze casting as soon as possible. The casters will need a couple of weeks at least, so the sooner I get the parts finished and dispatched, the better. The milliput parts need to be cast in pewter so that I can refine them and add detail. I make cold cure high temperature silicon rubber moulds for the undercarriage, initially by laying the parts into a bed of plasticine enclosed within a box of Lego. The silicon rubber is worked into the surface detail with a brush to minimise air bubbles. A vacuum chamber can be used to remove the bubbles, but this is a stage I don't carry out, for reasons I'll go into another time. The black part is for Project Mouse, which I was moulding at the same time. You can see more about this in Project Mouse Episode 3. This is a very messy process, as the silicone is very thick and sticky. I'll make a more detailed video about how I design and make the silicone moulds in the future. The mould can now be topped up and allowed to cure overnight. When the silicon is cured, the moulds are broken down and the plasticine is carefully removed, without disturbing the masters. The mould is then reassembled, a release agent applied, and the second side poured following the same procedure as before. With the silicone cured, the moulds are opened for the first time, and the masters are removed, leaving their detailed impression behind.
The excess silicon is now carefully trimmed away. Feeds for the metal are now cut into the top of the mould. Fine air vents are cut and drilled through the mould in preparation for casting. I can now cast the undercarriage in pewter. This can be dangerous, but I've developed a healthy respect for molten metal over the years. The moulds are clamped between two boards using elastic bands. The molten metal is carefully poured in and allowed to cool for about five minutes. When the pewter is solid, the mould can be broken down and the undercarriage castings removed. The metal is still hot, so it's best to use pliers. Some metal has gone up the air vents, but that's okay. The excess metal will go back in the pot and be reused. You can now see all the stages in converting a 3D printed part into a metal master. Of course, the casting still has to be cleaned up and the detail added. And this is the longest stage. It took me several days of hand finishing and adding detail to complete these parts and fit them to the aircraft. They are now ready to go to the bronze casters, but I expect you'd like to see how they look on the aircraft first. Well, here goes. Bear in mind that most of the parts still have to be converted into metal masters, and I haven't started on the cockpit, exhausts and undercarriage doors yet. The horizontal and vertical tails have to be sized and profiled, and there are still some alignment issues that need to be resolved. The props are still chunky with milliput. I prefer them this heavy as it allows me plenty of leeway when it comes to filing down the metal master. Overall I'm very happy. The stance is good and casting the undercarriage in bronze allows me to keep it slender and detailed but still strong enough for dispatching worldwide. I still have to sculpt the two new optional figures, but I have a secret weapon coming to help me there. More on that next time. I'm already taking orders for the MB5, so if you would like one of the 50 I'll be making, give me a call or send me an email. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Better still, tell your friends, they might like them too. Why not check out some of my other videos or visit my website where you can see the full Staples and Vine range and pick up some great merchandise.